Yeah, well, good morning, Tim. All right. Good morning, Grandpa. How you doing? I'm doing I'm doing great. You know, um, sometimes you get up in the morning and you go, where am I and what am I doing? And <laughs> obviously, I know where I am and who I exactly. am. Exactly. But, but sort of internally, you're going, you know, what is, what is it about? What, what's life about today? What's I, what am I supposed to be doing today? How am I doing it? And um, one of the things that I, I look forward to is asking the Lord to clear my mind from whatever thoughts I had in my dreams last night, whatever thoughts I, I have about aches or pains or work I have to do or uncomfortable situations that I might find myself in today. Um, say, Lord, clear me up this morning so that I can focus on the things that you have. Amen. The things that you want done. Yeah. Amen. So, yes, I'm, I'm feeling great in that sense. Me, me too. Me too. It's been a couple, it's been an interesting couple of days and we'll talk about it. Oh, but yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I want to hear more about. Uh, what yeah. Well, let's uh, introduce the episode real quick. Okay. Happy Freedom Friday, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to our YouTube channel. We're going to be talking about Jesse or actually, as Dave Chappelle says, that French actor, Juicy Smollier today ah. and uh you know all about that stuff so sit back relax we got a great show you ready yeah i'm ready all right here we go grandpa a little laid back episode today we're gonna yes. be talking about juicy um for those who don't know that's jesse smollett but uh it's been a good couple of it's been an interesting couple of days yeah, I I've been sick. Um, on Wednesday, I woke up with a fever, body aches, chills, mm. and um, all that kind of stuff. And so I just wanted to see I wanted to go get tested. Um, just for my own personal enjoyment, not that I enjoy getting tested, but I wanted to see if my natural immunity was holding up. Yes, well, I went to go get tested. I didn't tell them I had any symptoms beforehand. Took a saliva test. Got my test results back on Thursday. I had a 102.8 fever on Wednesday. Got my test results back. Turns out I'm negative for COVID. Mm, I'm also goodness. negative for communism. <laughs> but it turns out it was just the, the little old flu. And, you know, the flu, everybody forgot about the flu. But the flu believed in itself and it's still here. And Everybody forgot about it. And yeah. I told I told one of my buddies and he said, dude, you're the only person in the, eight, in the last 18 months to get the flu. <laughs> That's right. Well, you know, the statistics that I read was uh, they estimated that the flu number of people who had the flu in in 2019 was somewhere around 67 or 68 thousand. Oh, but in 2020, there were only 600 and some cases of flu reported throughout the entire country. Isn't it amazing Somebody how that works? Said, Wait a minute. How do you go from 67 or 68,000 down to 600 in one year? Did we get rid of the flu? Or were a lot of those cases of flu listed as COVID? Because the, the symptoms that you had, the <clears throat> 102 fever and aches and chills. They were COVID. If you say that to somebody, their immediate response would be, oh, you have COVID. It's been over a year, almost two years now. Uh -huh. And my natural immunity is still holding strong. Wow. Isn't you that great? A, a booster to your natural immunity? Oh, no, you don't actually. Uh, well, we got quite the story here. Yes. Um, I'm going to put a graphic up on screen. Jesse Smollett, mm -hmm. uh, the boy who cried MAGA. You know, uh -huh. like the boy who cried wolf, except he's yep. the boy who cried MAGA. For those of you who don't know who Jesse Smollett is, he is an actor, was an actor. Sorry. Uh, past tense was an actor yeah, on the show any longer yeah well he's gonna hopefully be in jail uh was an actor on the show empire which is mm -hmm. was a major show um anyways he's black and he's also gay um mm -hmm. those are his admissions not mine and so a couple years ago about three years ago in 2019 almost he was attacked um brutally attacked um, surprisingly, at 2 a.m. in Chicago, in minus 16 degree below zero uh, Fahrenheit weather, by two Trump supporters and two white racists and wearing ski masks, 
who mm-hmm. were shouting at him, this is MAGA country, uh, and shouted homophobic slurs and racist slurs at him, beat him, put a noose around his neck, and then poured bleach on him. Mm. Well, he went on like ABC. He did a whole bunch of news documentaries, and he had all this support from Kamala Harris. Uh, right, because it was a great example of white racism. Cory Booker, AOC, Joe Biden. Homophobic. I mean, The View. Everybody was like, "This is wrong," and yes, you know, because he, they didn't he know. Became the poster child for a while. For and they just supported him because Jesse was a, such a nice guy. He's such a you know such a good guy. He's and no one would think that he'd be doing this to get more money. I mean, he's getting $65,000 per episode. Well, turns out some things didn't start adding up in his story. Jesse Smollett is actually lying about the whole thing. He fabricated his own hate crime. Mm-hmm. So turns out, at a, first of all, it's 2 a.m. in the middle of Chicago. Right. And you're going to tell me that two white guys are just waiting for Jesse Smollett to come out of his, you know, nice apartment that he's living in because he wants to go get a smoke or get or buy a sandwich from uh, from Subway at 2 a.m. when mm-hmm. he could just order room service uh-huh. or have it delivered. And they're betting that he's going to take, you know, is going to walk to it and not take a limo or have somebody come pick him up like he usually does. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that happened. Well, they must be turned... very warm blooded people to stand out there in the cold for very long. Exactly. And they shouted, This is MAGA country. You blankety blank, blank, blank. Right. And he turned around and then he beat them and, or they beat him and then he tried to beat them up and then they left him, just magically left him. Yep. Well, what's great is the two white racists who shouted these uh, slurs at him. Mm-hmm. Do you know who they were? Mm-hmm. Who were they? Oh, you don't? I heard I heard that they would have a tough time uh, being examined as white racists. Yes, that is true. Because it turns out there were two black actors that Jesse Smollett had hired and paid $3,500 each to come do this to him. Mm-hmm. In fact, they were caught on camera earlier at a gas station buying supplies for this and also caught in their ride and there uh, it was an uber or a lyft or something like that on camera canvassing the area beforehand Ooh. well these black guys jesse said all right guys i want you to beat me but not too bad and then i also want it to make it seem like i'm, I'm beating you guys up as well mm-hmm. yeah and then the original plan was to pour gasoline on him and then jesse was like well no let's just do bleach because gasoline's a little too extreme yeah exactly yeah, I, I think bleach is pretty extreme too i I would say, pour water on me. It'll exactly. probably freeze and I'll, I'll be iced to death or something. Exactly. Well, all of this started coming out. And turns out Jesse Smollett is guilty. In fact, the jury found him guilty of five of six felony charges. Uh, didn't just didn't the, uh, the guys after. who beat him also testified at the trial? Yes, and, it sucks uh, when the guys they, who beat they, you they actually hired testified. by him to do this. Yeah, they did. Although, during the trial, he maintained... That was not true. The money he paid them, he said, was for them teaching him uh, fitness stuff. They, they, they were fitness coaches, and that's what he paid them for, and that they were making up this whole story with all the exact details of what happened to him. Uh, but anyway, yeah. on the stand, he maintained this, the story. His innocence. That I'm innocent, and this happened exactly as I reported it. Well, that's fine. But he... the jury didn't think so. Yeah. Well, Ben Shapiro says tonight, Jesse Smollett can rest knowing that his attacker has been convicted. There you go. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Unfortunately, he attacked himself. You know, what's interesting is the psychology of, of what we do as human beings. When we become attached to uh, an ideal of some kind, uh, we can, we can get so wrapped up in it that we will do anything to foster that ideal. Uh, that's a characteristic that human beings have. We tend to do that. And the, sometimes the more we get pushed back against, the, the more violent we'll become in pushing that idea. It's very true. 
the yeah. key is what is the ideal that you're following? Where does it come from? What is it? We, we maintain the only ideals worth doing that for are the ones that come from God and reflect his point of view of what is good and what is evil. Because anything that man comes up with is subject to all the frailty and whims and psychotics episodes and desires and fears yeah. of man. So we taint everything that we call an ideal if it doesn't come from the creator, the one who knows what really is good and what really is bad. Exactly. You have a, you have a, a misconstrued view of, of what is right and wrong and justice. And it, 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 this, the Jesse Smollett stuff is huge because you take these, you're trying to victimize yourself. You're trying to ostracize a certain group, a demographic of people who are Trump supporters and say yeah. they're white racists and all that. And it turns out your story's all a lie, dude. And it shows that also the bias of the media, you compare this with the Rittenhouse case. Both of these cases, the media acted without the facts and without waiting, just like in the George Floyd case. Mm -hmm. With Rittenhouse, the media automatically said he was a vigilante, crossed state lines, and he's guilty. Well, we looked at our episodes last week and the week before. He didn't do any of that. Yeah. Right? It turns out he's innocent on all charges. And Jesse Smollett, who the media said is innocent, and he's the victim here, and, you know, uh -huh. Poor black gay man. He's just ostracized from society. Turns out he fabricated the whole thing and he was a liar and he's going to hopefully serve jail time. Yep. But it, it definitely shows a lot of the bias of the media. And I, I'm glad because we're told in Psalm 33 that the Lord nullifies the counsel of the nations and then he frustrates the plans of the people and that he laughs at them at their, you know, their plans to like overturn him and act without him. And yes. uh, I think the Lord allows this to happen because it causes a lot of people to say, hey, that's not right. And there must be something else going on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yes. And, and I, I believe that the Lord wants to point that out to people because he's invited every single person to become part of his family. Right. It, scripture clearly says we're not part of God's family. We're part of his creation but we're not part of his family until we accept his invitation through Jesus to be part of the family. Yeah. So there, there's a desire deep down within us to be part of something. And the, the thing that really satisfies that is being part of God's family. Yeah. But God says, I'm inviting everybody. I don't care who you are, where you came from, what you've done in the past. I'm inviting you to be part of my family today. However, there, there is one specific way to do that. Yeah, well, you don't it's, get uh, to choose how to do it. God's already said, this is the way to do it. Come John, on. John 1, 12. But to those who received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believed in his name. That's it. If you believe in the name of Jesus, and that implies that you believe in everything that he said and did and why he did it, if you believe all of the truth about Jesus, yeah. then you are a child of God. Until you mm -hmm. do that, you're not a child of God. Exactly. You know, um, Grandpa, this uh, story of Jesse Smollett, Juicy Smollett, Juicy Smollier, it's so funny to say that. Is that, is that what uh, the comedian? Dave Chappelle. Yeah, Dave, Dave Chappelle, Chappelle yeah. did a little skit on it and in his new uh, Netflix special where he says, uh, yeah, you know that French actor, uh, Juicy Smollier? Yeah, but um, it reminds me of, of a character in the Bible who also cried wolf, who also fabricated a story and caused a lot of people, um, caused a lot of destruction in the wake. But God used it for good. Do you yep. know what story I'm thinking of? Well, um, you know, the story that comes to mind when you somebody who cried wolf, uh, I, I'm thinking of the, the story of, of uh, Joseph. Mm -hmm. and uh potiphar's wife exactly and uh yeah. for those who may not be familiar with the story okay yeah joseph and potiphar's wife tell us a little bit about that well uh joseph was sold into slavery 
and he came into the possession of a man named Potiphar in in Egypt. Potiphar was the captain of the Pharaoh's guards. Mm. So he was a very prominent guy. But uh, Joseph started out as a slave, but Potiphar saw that he had special talents and was able to organize and manage things very well. So eventually, he became in charge of all of Potiphar's things, his home, his estate, his work. Uh, he, he was second in command to Potiphar, even though he was a slave. Potiphar's wife looked at Joseph and said, this is a competent guy and he's awfully cute. So she uh -oh. started making advances to him. He rejected the advances. Finally, one day when he was in the house doing something, she came up and made some really overt advances to him and he turned her down and she grabbed at his clothing and, and grabbed part of his clothing off of him. And he, he ran, ran from, he actually ran from her. He ran from the house. Which people, if you're watching this and you're, you know, dealing with sexual temptation, that's what you're supposed to do. Run. Yeah, he well, apparently people. Potiphar's wife was desirable and she was saying, hey, you can have me right now any way you like. And so he ran. Potiphar's wife then said, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do now? I can't I'll look claim, like a fool. I'll claim that he raped me. Yeah, tried to rape me. He tried to. Yeah, he attacked me. Yeah. yeah. So she told Potiphar. Potiphar was very angry. In fact, Potiphar could have killed Joseph at that time. But you have to wonder why he didn't kill Joseph. Well, uh, a, a couple of things. I From think God had favor, obviously. Well, I, I think God helped Potiphar see, wait a minute. Joseph has never done anything to say that he would betray you in any way. He's always been faithful and loyal and right with you. Uh, I don't know if Potiphar had second thoughts about his wife and said, hmm, wait yeah. a minute. Here's I watched Joseph. This. I know where Joseph is. Yeah. Here's my wife. I know where my wife is. I remember in high school, we watched this uh, movie about Joseph and Potiphar <clears throat> or Joseph's life. And in the movie, it's not in the Bible. It was very interesting. In the movie, Potiphar's wife actually like scrapes herself uh -huh. and like fakes injuries on herself as well. So it's more reliable and everything. Oh, she yeah. cries well, so that her mascara is all down. Well, you know, it makes the whole scene. But it's it that person in the bible highlights the whole entire case with jesse smollett so perfectly yes. it's a false witness it's deception it's lies it's all for your personal profit and you don't care who you hurt that's it anyways i'm glad that the lord will have his justice i pray that jesse smollett will come to jesus that he will <laughs> repent because that dude is selfish well, and he God's is. inviting him into the family as well. I know. And you know what? He's also inviting Kyle Rittenhouse in too, who's innocent in that case. But without Jesus, guys, we're all in the same boat. That's it. So we're encouraged because all everything that's happening, it seems like a lot of truth is coming to light. And also, more and more people are learning that these liberties that we have, if we want to keep these liberties, we have to keep our relationship with the Lord. We have to know who he is. Isn't that right, Grandpa? Well, yes, and, and it's becoming very clear. Uh, we got about 45 seconds. Okay. Uh, just as those who double down when challenged and they're in the wrong, yeah. those of us who are in the right need to double down as well. We have, we have right to double down upon. Mm. The human, the human being, when challenged, says, I either am going to accept the challenge and say, wait a minute, I'm going to examine and see if the challenge is correct or not, or what we tend to do more often is say, how dare they do that to me? I'm going to show them, and then we try to go off even stronger. Uh, I, I pray that God will give each one a reasonable mind and a reasonable heart to see the truth to come to the truth who is Jesus and let God minister to your life. Yeah. It uh we need to go all in on truth. And with that guys, we'll sign off for now. Yeah. God bless you guys. Yeah. Happy Freedom Friday and Merry Christmas to come. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.